I love Elgar. I'm just going to have to say that every episode. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the ninth episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 214th episode overall titled The Whole Lie. We begin this episode with stock footage of Tommy driving the race car from episode one. Seriously, they've already given up. We see our car wash is happening outside the youth center to benefit the baseball team, and Tanya, Kat, Adam, and Justin are helping wash cars with stone and extras. Folk and Skull are also there because those monkeys have like nothing else to do. Porto shows up in the parking lot putting a detonator into an empty water bucket. I feel like someone could just add water to that and short circuit the entire thing. Justin's cleaning a tire and he sees Porto's fat ass running away. He questions what it was, walking over to where he saw Porto leave around the corner, and he finds Porto there, muttering to himself about his deception blaster. He introduces Justin to a new monster named Mouthpiece, who fires a laser at him through a spray gun. Kat walks over to Tanya, asking him if she's seen Justin, and Tanya says that he went around the corner, so she's gonna go find him. Meanwhile, Justin is getting blasted by Mouthpiece, which actually sounds really dirty. They leave just before Kat finds him, and she asks what's going on with him, and she thinks that she heard Porto, and Justin lies, saying that there was no one there but him. Then Piranatron show up attacking the two, which they quickly defeat. Here we go, guys. Underwater, Divatox talks about how lying is more fun. Elgar explains about how Justin is now lying while fighting off a giant octopus. Porto then just spells out everything by saying that every time Justin lies, a Piranatron will show up. We get it, guys. At the car wash, Adam and Tanya are flirting. Yes, yes, yes. Then the monkeys decide they need to be more mischievous, so they hold a knot in Stone's water hose before he gets sprayed in the face. Cat laughs about how Stone got wet, and Justin says, no he didn't. And then we see the Piranatrons have shown up. Cat suggests that he goes inside to get some juice, and he says, okay, I don't like juice. Then more Piranatrons show up. Cat gets Tanya, and they decide to go inside before we're reminded about the bomb. Cat and Tanya walk into the youth center, and Cat tells Tanya about how much Justin has been lying. Tanya asks if it's anything unusual has happened today, and he lies saying nothing. Then Kat takes his homework out from his backpack, and she asks if he turned in his homework assignment yesterday, and he says that no, he hasn't turned in his homework all year. We think that the homework is dated June 9th, 1997, to which I have to say, seems like it's time for summer vacation, y'all. Also, when did you guys graduate? Even more Piranatrons show up outside, walking around now in plain view. Stone points, yelling, running away with everyone while Adam looks on. Then everyone comes running in, screaming about a monster, and Kat, Tony, and Justin come running out to help Adam. Again, we see that stupid bomb. Now it's time to watch Adam do what he does best, fight. Also, Justin is just hitting them with a wet rag. They ask if he needs help and he keeps saying that he's fine, which causes more Piranatrons to appear. Tanya, thank God for you, immediately knows what's going on and she just tells Justin to shut it. They fight off the Piranatrons winning. Tanya, Kat, and Justin are going to go to the power chamber while Adam stays behind just in case. At the power chamber, they explain to Demetra what's going on with Justin and Justin tries to chime in, but Kat covers his damn mouth with her nasty hand. Tanya points out that Divatox knows that they can handle the Piranatron, so it's clearly a distraction. They see Mouthpiece, and Tanya and Kat are going to take out the monster, and Justin says that he's just going to have to tell them to shut up, but then he lies again, which causes another Piranatron to show up in front of Adam, who takes care of it in a really funny way. Then, they all shift into Turbo. Green, Yellow, and Pink show up in front of Mouthpiece, who calls in even more Piranatrons. They fight them off pretty well. Tanya is doing a lot of flips, which is cool. Alpha then laments that Tommy couldn't hear their call. Probably because he's all the way back in episode 1, y'all. Then we see more of Tommy driving, and we get a voiceover of Alpha telling him to come help the others. And Tommy's voice is 80 yards, saying he's on his way. Then the Red Ranger just randomly shows up, helping the Rangers. Tommy takes on Mouthpiece solo, because of course he does, and Kat ends up getting hit with the laser. And now this bitch is lying too, causing Piranatrons to show up. Then Tommy and Adam get hit as well, and now they're lying, and like, yeah, you get it. Tommy keeps telling them to shut up. Then Mouthpiece comes up behind Tommy, holding the laser gun at his back at point blank. But Tommy kicks him away right away. Also, Elgar is still struggling with a giant octopus, but Deep Talks is pretty sure she's going to blow up this parking lot pretty easily. In the power chamber, Demetra and Alpha tell Justin to break the spell, which he does by admitting that everything he says is a lie, which is technically the truth, so... Whatever, he definitely told the truth a few times earlier, but whatever. Shift into Turbo! Justin shows up in the battle, and he asks the other rangers if he asks them a question, will they tell him the truth? And they say, never, which is the truth. So... All the Piranatrons go away. Justin regroups with the others, and they call out the Turbo Ram Cannon, firing at Mouthpiece, blowing him up. Elgar is now almost all the way out of the submarine thanks to the giant octopus, and Geotox fires the torpedoes. Mouthpiece grows giant, twice it seems, so the rangers call out their turbo zords, forming the turbo megazord. They start just kicking and punching the crap out of this guy, who fires back at them. Justin uses his headlights to shoot a laser out of it, which is a new thing. They realize they have to hurry because there's still a freaking bomb at the youth center. So then they just take out the turbo megazord saber, spinning out and killing Mouthpiece. R.I.P. Deep Throat. 
The rangers show up at the car wash, telling everyone to stand back as they start to search for the bomb. Hulk and Skull accidentally hit a mop in their panic to get the rangers to turn them back to normal, and they hit the bucket, causing the bomb to fly through the air, making it land in water just as it explodes, so the water goes everywhere. I mean, I was joking before, guys. Cat then asks the monkeys if they ever considered detective work, which is kind of funny. Underwater, Deep Sharks wants to know whose dumb idea it was to make Justin tell lies, and Elgar shows up with cooked, giant octopus. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! At the youth center, Stone thanks Justin, Tanya, and Kat for their help with the car wash, and he wants to know what they think about the new smoothies. He gives them samples, and Justin says that it's kind of disgusting, and Tanya agrees, as does Kat. Stone then comes back over, asking Justin what he thinks, and Justin tells him the truth, that it's pretty bad. He says that he's pretty sure the monkeys added their own ingredients when he wasn't looking. Dude, you were just serving food handled by the monkeys again? Then the monkeys are playing with the blender, and it sprays on Stone's face. Then Justin promises to always tell the truth like the bull haircut loser he is. The end. This episode isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I like that Kat and Tanya just assumed that I had nothing to do with a spell and that Justin was just a hardcore liar out of nowhere because, well, kids just do weird things like that. I mean, maybe not Justin's age, but it was still funny to me. The continuous gag with Elgar fighting off the giant octopus was comedy gold and I want it like every week. But uh, where the hell was Tommy? You may notice that Jason David Frank is barely around these first 19 episodes, but we'll talk about why exactly later. But to be frank, eh, puns, I don't know that there's actually a real reason. So next time we'll continue the absolute non-story that is Turbo. But until then, may the power protect you.